There are more units now revealed with rules to use in your Death Watch come Agents of the Imperium Army. More kill teams than just the kill team, and more characters to support your squishy human army of kill teams. By which I mean the kill team squads from the game Kill Team, not the Death Watch grouping called Kill Teams, because Death Watch doesn't have an updated kill team in their namesake game Kill Team. Anyway, where can you see these rules? I will be showing them off on screen and explaining what they mean and what they do for your Death Watch slash Agents army. The good news is, the gang's all here. No units from the Death Watch Index are gone completely. The bad news is that very little change has been made to them. Some rules have been tweaked, but mostly we are seeing a copy and paste job. The aspect I'm calling neutral news is that yes, many of these units are legends. What are legends? They are rules for units that you can use in your games of Warhammer 40,000. Really, that's all you need to know. The slightly extended version of that is, as Games Workshop says over and over, you can use these in any games outside of a Games Workshop run tournament event. You can use these in your home, you can use these at your club, you can use them in tournaments that aren't run by Games Workshop. But the tournament scene is so pervasive that you'd be forgiven for believing that even though Games Workshop has updated the rules for your units to be compatible with the new codex, you might be told that these are not rules that you can use. Chipping Norton Rotary Club is not a Games Workshop tournament venue every Monday night. Your friend's dining room table is not a Games Workshop tournament venue. Games Workshop isn't kicking down your door to steal your Death Watch models away into the night. In fact, they have updated the rules to continue to be valid. That is the slightly longer version of what Legends are. The full-on version of Legends Explained is for another time. I'll be looking at the points of each unit as we go, and you can find the points for these units in a whole other PDF document. A document that was even released before these legend units, which were also released before the codex came out available to everyone. The legends field manual has points, and the points are confusing. We have the points, but there is no red or green coloring to show if they have gone up or down. You might have also missed that the Adeptus Sororitas Crusaders and Death Cult Assassins have had their points updated. Also, not marked by any colour. So if anyone ever tells you that legend points are never updated, they are. But more than the red-green colours, the points for the agents of the Imperium units only have one set of values. The points for the Codex units, post the book Codex, have different values for two different situations. One set of points for using the units in an agents of the Imperium army, and the other for using them as allies to other Imperial factions. All we can assume for now is that they cost the same amount of points in either case. That also holds true for the Death Watch units in the Codex. Their points are the same whether they're allies or in their own army. And I think we can also guess that having two sets of points was a later idea as they're not in this Legends PDF points document or in the physical Codex. But no matter. Points are down for most of our Death Watch units and you may be wondering why. We're not using the Space Marine Codex in their units anymore. We're still missing characters like Apothecaries, like the one that comes in the Death Watch Combat Patrol. So we can't attach the same characters we did before. No Judiciars to fight first, no Chaplains, no Librarians. If you want a Captain, use the Watchmaster profile and have a Watchmaster. If you want a Lieutenant for the lethal hits, use Captain Artemis, he does the same thing. If you want a Lieutenant for fallback and shoot, use the Watchmaster. As we are no longer Adeptus Astartes keyword, we don't use the Oath of Moment or any other offensive army rule. The army rule is assigned agents, which lets you use these Death Watch units as allies in other Imperial factions. Even if you ally the Death Watch kill teams into a Space Marine army, you don't get the benefit of Oath of Moment. No Adeptus Astartes keyword, so any stratagems won't work on Death Watch units. If you use this Alien Hunter's Armor of Contempt, it works on Death Watch units in the Death Watch Detachment. If you use this Gladius Detachment Armor of Contempt, it doesn't work on Death Watch. Without the Space Marine Codex, we no longer have access to Space Marine units that do what we do, but cheaper. Like having Intercessors instead of the Fortis Kill Team, and we don't get access to any of the Space Marine vehicles. So there's no more Xenomortis Dreadnought. That sucks. And we have fewer detachments when used as our own army. Not the seven Codex Space Marine Detachments plus Black Spear Task Force. Instead, there are four in the Agents of the Imperium Codex, but really two detachments that work for the Death Watch units. 
the Ordo Xenos alien hunters and the Imperialis fleet. But let's get into the unit rules. The Death Watch kill team in the Codex seems wrong. It is called the Death Watch kill team. They should have the Death Watch and the Death Watch kill team, their name, as key words. But we're missing their name. If you think, oh, well, it's got Death Watch there, it's got kill team there, they're the Death Watch kill team, what's the problem? Well, compare this to the Space Wolf, Wolf and Dreadnought. It has the Wolf and Dreadnought keyword, its name. It also has the Dreadnought keyword. This is important for triggering stratagems, abilities and going into transports. And it's also important because the requisition Sisters of Battle squad has a different name to the Battle Sisters of the Adeptus Sororitas. It's different keywords. So the different emulator versions also work differently on different squads. An Adeptus Sororitas Canoness cannot join an agent of the Imperium Sisters of Battle squad. So this makes it weird for the Death Watch kill team. So we have to play rules as intended, rules as assumed. It has the Death Watch keyword, it has the kill team keyword, and it should have its name, Death Watch kill team, as a keyword. This will be important later. I'm going to keep calling it by its previous name of Death Watch Veterans to help you and everyone else keep up. The unit needs an FAQ, as when you have a bolt gun and a shield, you don't have a close combat weapon, meaning you have no way to fight when you're in engagement range. They just fixed this error on the app for the Index at the start of August. It was fine on the PDF version of the Index, just not on the app, and they've copied over the app error. You fix one error, and three errors come in, as when the app updated at the end of August to adapt to the Agents of the Imperium Codex, if you take four Thunderhammers in a unit of ten, it says that's an error says you're only allowed two. There's an error of no combat weapons on the shield, that's back on the app, and the sergeant can't have a Xenophase blade and a shield, even though the sergeant should be able to swap his bolt gun and power weapon for a power weapon and a static shield, and then swap his power weapon for a Xenophase blade. I can only assume that all of the people who were working on this were doing so on a very tight schedule. That is just the vibe that Imperial Agents gives off. Three years is too short for an edition of 40k, and there is a feeling that the higher up Games Workshop executive attitude is, just launch the rules and we'll fix it later. We see other errors with the Rhino being able to transport any 12 models, not 12 infantry models, but we know what it means and we'll play it as intended. There are other errors like the Emperor's Will stratagem. You use it in the movement phase and it lasts until the end of the phase. It is meant to let a unit advance or fall back and still be able to shoot and charge. We know what it should say, that it lasts until the end of the turn, but these errors are stacking up. And this gets extra confusing when you look at the Inquisitorial Agents box, as it is labelled, for the Codex Imperial Agents that has an Inquisitor on the front which gives you units from the keyword Agents of the Imperium whose faction ability is assigned agents. Did you follow all that? They have finally fixed Greyfax having leadership 4 plus from the start of the index a year ago. It was an impossible leadership as leadership cannot be better than 5 plus. Now it is 6 plus. And you might be sad to know that when allying in Battle Sisters, it costs 115 points for each sister. According to the PDF, it's 115 points for one model. So with just two units, you can get over 2000 points. I do despair. Okay, let's look at the Death Watch Veterans Kill Team. They are 100 points for 5, as they were before, so that's 200 points for 10. They are a unit in the Codex. There's an array of weapons you can have, more if you actually trust the wording there rather than the app. Some weapon choices are better than others. You will want a Xenophase Blade over a Power Sword, unless you don't like that whole radical side. And you will want an Infernus Heavy Bolter over a Shotgun. As the other kill teams work best with their shooting, I advise equipping this unit for combat. Have four Death Watch veterans with thunder hammers, four with shields and power weapons, one with black shield blades, and the sergeant with the xenophase blade and a combi weapon. A very cool stratagem for them is violent acquisition in the Imperialist fleet detachment. It's two command points, but for combat it will give you sustained hits and lance. With more attacks potentially, you can get through hordes easier, and with Lance, that's great on strength 5. Against toughness 4 enemies, you are now wounding them on a 2+. And your hammers have a lot more impact against the tanks and monsters. There are a lot of characters we can add. I wouldn't recommend Draxus. 
we don't need Draxus as we already get full rerolls against aliens anyway. Having plus one is not a great benefit when you could have it elsewhere. You could have a Rhino for protection over her 18 inch range of no shooting at this unit. You could use a regular Inquisitor instead because then you get one command point back if you're teleporting the unit or use special ammunition. But a Watchmaster is preferred as their ability gives you a stratagem for one command point cheaper each battle round under the current balance patch. And he also gives a very cool ability like the Emperor's Will stratagem to advance or fall back and still be able to shoot and charge. And this kill team, because of their key words, can also be led by Cortez or Greyfax. They don't specify Death Watch veterans, but they can join any Imperium battle line units. And that is the Death Watch. So you can get anti psycho attacks from Greyfax, and you'll also get a copy of the Fortis Kill Team ability to have plus one to hit against enemies below half strength. That rarely comes up and we don't much need the plus one when we have rerolls. Greyfax is better elsewhere, like Celestine's bedroom. Or we can have Cortez for the same reason, battle line infantry. The six plus invulnerable save is not the most necessary when we already have shields for a four plus invulnerable save and we would have to get hit by AP minus four for the six plus invulnerable save to activate over our three plus armor save. He does bring another hammer with one less strength, but an extra AP. For 75 points though, we're close to another five Death Watch veterans. They will remain one of your mainstay kill teams. The Death Watch Terminators are still around. They are still 210 points for five or 420 points for 10. Along with the Codex kill team, these look to be the only squads that we can use in boarding action games, but I'll talk about boarding actions another time. Their rules and stats are the same in the Legends document as they were in the Index document. They gained the keyword you would expect, Ordo Xenos and Retinue. As their weapon options are the same and they're not box locked to be Terminators, so it isn't just you use the special weapons that come in the box, which is one assault cannon, one heavy flamer and one cyclone missile launcher, you can have three cyclone missile launchers if you want and that option is still the best. They don't have a lot of transport options, we no longer have access to land raiders, they can't go in a rhino, but they can go in a Corvus Blackstar. The Corvus Black Star can take any 12 infantry models. It doesn't say no Terminators. And the Death Watch Terminators just take up the space of one model in a Corvus Black Star. So you can have Death Watch Terminators in a Corvus Black Star. However, I think you're probably better off just using their natural deep striking. That's probably all you're gonna need. For stratagems, they do okay with the special ammunition stratagems. That gives you lots of bullets if you're a unit of 10, However, you don't want a unit of 10 because it doesn't matter if you're five or 10 Terminators, you are still a maximum of three special weapons. So I suggest keeping these to a squad of five. They've updated the attached unit to be compatible with the Imperial Agents Codex. Any character that can join a Death Watch kill team can join the Terminators. So you can have Artemis or the Watchmaster, but then you won't be able to deep strike because they lose the deep strike ability. If you've heard otherwise, it may be because you've heard that the Inquisitor can join a Grey Knight Terminator squad, which can then still teleport. That's a rule on the agent's Grey Knight Terminator unit, not the Death Watch Terminators. So you've really got to think, is the Death Watch Terminator squad better than the Grey Knight Terminators that come in the Agents of the Imperium Codex? Grey Knight Terminators are 210 points as allies, same as the Death Watch Terminators, but they are 190 points when used in our own agent's army. The Death Watch Terminators can be really tough because if they have a Storm Shield, they go up to four wounds, but the Grey Knight Terminators can resurrect a model. The Death Watch Terminators are Objective Control 1, or we have Objective Control 3 Grey Knight Terminators because they have a banner, they can take and hold objectives. For shooting, the Death Watch Terminators are gonna be better as long as you have those special weapons, or for combat, the Grey Knights are better. Their special rule is more combat focused. It's not just you can cause a battle shock test. And the Nemesis force weapons get more attacks than the Death Watch Terminator power weapons or power fists, though with a slightly lower strength compared to the power fists. When they charge, the Grey Knight Terminators have lethal hits, but if the Death Watch Terminators are in the Ordo Xenus detachment, once per game, maybe more if you use a stratagem, they can also have lethal hits. It's a bit of an either way. It depends if you really want that Death Watch keyword. If you're preferring the Imperialist Fleet Detachment, the Grey Knight Terminators will be better, even if they happen to be painted black. Because you don't need a big Death Watch Terminator squad, they can be part of a good starting army. 
and they're perfect for allying into other Imperial factions if you like. If your Battle Sisters want even more firepower, Death Watch Terminators will work. If your Imperial Guard wants some heavy boys with a 2 plus save, the Death Watch Terminators will work. And then we have Kill Team Cassius. They were 255 points, they're now down to 220. That's 20 points per model, which is amazing value. Instead of 10 Death Watch Kill Team Veterans for 200 points, take Kill Team Cassius for 20 points more. You get a bike, you get a Terminator, you get loads of cool abilities, and a character to go with it. The squad is a character, so when you're adding units to another army, say you are adding to a Battle Sisters army through the assigned agents, this 11 model kill team takes up the character slot, meaning that you can also have 10 veterans as your other retinue slot in a 1000 point game. There's no requirement for the character you requisition to join the retinue unit. If it did, then you would never be able to take assassins as allies. I had hoped that with the Kill Team Cassius weapon rules, they would have fixed the combat weapon profile, but nope. You may see that other units have changed, but this error is not fixed. The Tiny Knife has the same profile as a Power Sword. But they did change the twin bolt gun on the bike to match other bikes. It used to be just four shots, now it's two shots twin linked. So it's odd that they changed something, but not others. The only consolation with some of these being like, oh, yep, it's all the same weapon profile and all of the long vigil ranged weapons. In 9th edition, shooting this unit would take about two days for all of the different profiles that they had on all the different kinds of weapons. Combi Melter, Other Melter, Plasma Pistol, Hand Flamer, all of these had different profiles. As the rules are staying the same, Kill Team Cassius has the best leadership in the game. 5 plus is the best you can get, and they have a special rule to re-roll it. So that really sucks for Tyranid players with the Shadow and the Warp, and it sucks for Chaos Knights and anyone else who's trying to be scary. They're tough. They're well built, and they don't run away. They have the Kill Team ability. This is a negative, sort of. It doesn't apply to every unit with the Kill Team keyword, just if it has it as an ability and it's to stop you using the highest toughness in the unit. The core rules are, you use the highest toughness in the bodyguard squad. So Kill Team Cassius isn't toughness 5 all of the time the Terminator is alive. You use the majority toughness of the unit, which is almost always going to be 4, unless you're down to like the last 4 models, including the bike and the Terminator. The Kill Team rule also lets them embark in transport, even though there's a bike and a Terminator and jump pack models that in other units would not be able to get inside, but they just have the infantry keyword. All of them. All of them have the infantry keyword. That bike is infantry. Even though with the kill team rule they can embark in a lot more transports, I don't think there's any that will fit them. Even the Corvus Blackstar no longer lets you have one kill team or 12 Death Watch infantry. Now it's just 12 Death Watch infantry. Cassius's team takes up 15 models worth of transport capacity due to the jump packs, the bike, and the terminator. But to make up for it, they still have deep strike. Rapid ingress is your friend. And if you move your bike around in the right way, you can get a very easy charge in the charge phase. We have a wide array of guns that can make use of the special ammunition, because the special ammunition stratagems are no longer tied to just bolt weapons, which is then a list that needs constantly updating. So the Flamer has special ammunition, like it did in 9th edition. The Frag Cannon has special ammunition, and somehow the Librarian's Psychic Cleanse also has special ammunition. Unlike the regular Death Watch Veteran Kill Team, Kill Team Cassius has no rerolls, so they really miss that we no longer have Oath of Moment. But the Fleet Detachment, which gives plus one to hit against an enemy, is good compensation. Now, because of those keyword errors I was talking about, as Cassius is Death Watch and Kill Team, that is exactly the same keywords as in the Agent's Codex where Death Watch Kill Team exists, the unit previously known as the Veteran Kill Team. As characters like Inquisitors can join Death Watch Kill Team units, like they can join Imperium Battle Line units, it also applies to these Kill Teams like Kill Team Cassius. So you can have a Watchmaster or Artemis in this unit. Cassius is not an attached character unit. No combination has happened to add Cassius to the kill team, so there isn't a leader keyword on the abilities of Kill Team Cassius. 
Yes, they have the character keyword, but they're not a leader. So there isn't a leader keyword model already attached. So you can have a hero join them. We don't know if that was intentional. It's not really game breaking. But due to the odd wording of leader, while Kill Team Cassius is not an attached unit, so alone you can choose to have attacks allocated against Cassius to use his high wounds in invulnerable save, if there was an attached character, then it becomes an attached unit, and the leader rule prevents attacks from being allocated to any character model in the unit. I don't see a problem with Artemis being in the unit, get lethal hits and devastating wounds, though the two abilities, they don't synergize great. Having a Watchmaster may work better, but you lose deep strike as not every model in the unit has deep strike. The Watchmaster is a fun option if you want to advance and charge through the use of the bike, get a first turn charge across the board. If you don't think it's intended to let characters join Cassius, then you can do the same exploit with a Watchmaster in a Fortis or Proteus kill team. The Proteus kill team was 180 points for 5, a unit size no one took, or 360 points for 10. It is now 160 points for 5, or 320 for 10, which is the cheapest that it's ever been, even cheaper than the 330 points for 10 that it was at the start of the edition. They are very tough. Even though we have Toughness 5, we have the Kill Team rule to stop them just automatically always being Toughness 5. However, we have shenanigans for that. If you have four Terminator models and a bike model, half the models in the unit are Toughness 5, half of them are Toughness 4. So you use the highest one if they're tied. So the unit starts the game at Toughness 5. And those Terminators can be very tough, you can give them shields so they have four wounds. Please remember that as the Kill Team ability special rule hasn't changed, it is still based on the majority toughness in the unit, not the majority toughness of a bodyguard aspect of the unit. So if you add a character with toughness 4, that will make a unit with 6 models of toughness 4 and 5 models of toughness 5, so you would use toughness 4 to resolve attacks against them. Once those attacks from that enemy unit were completed, you would recalculate the toughness. However, if you add an Inquisitor, Toughness 3, you would still use the highest in case of a tie. Toughness 5 from the Terminators and Bike. The Proteus kill team can be joined by any character that can join a Death Watch kill team. Which is an odd way to phrase it, because this unit has the Death Watch and Kill Team keywords. This is why guessing rules as intended for units like Kill Team Cassius is hard. Cassius probably can't be joined by characters, because they don't have a separate section that talks about being an attached unit, but this could have been resolved if Games Workshop had not changed the name of the veteran kill team to be Death Watch Kill Team. The Proteus kill team weapons are the same as the Index. The veterans with jump packs are still locked to a single melee weapon and there are no ranged weapons, not even pistols. This is a very low effort copy and paste. There are no stats changes, and their weapons do have an advantage, sort of, sort of, over the Death Watch veteran kill team from the Codex. The Proteus kill team is not box lock to have fewer special weapons, because Games Workshop doesn't care to box lock Legends units. It isn't a single unit sold in a box. They can still have two frag cannons per five models in the squad. So a unit of 10 can be four frag cannons, one thunder hammer, four terminators and a bike. And that's not a bad idea. You could swap those four frag cannons for thunder hammers and that one thunder hammer for a power sword and shield if you want the proteus kill team to be more combat focused going with guns they like the special ammunition stratagems because they have a lot of shots and they can get decent armor penetration they usually don't need the plus one to hit from the fleet detachment rule because they get plus one to hit against any unit not below half strength so they get plus one to hit against enemies at full strength plus one to hit against enemies with reduced strength, at half strength, at all times that the enemy unit is not on their last legs. The Proteus kill team hasn't ever needed characters, and characters mess with the toughness of our unit. But they may wish they had an apothecary to bring back the big four wound terminators. The Proteus kill team makes for a very good requisition unit, and they're the cheapest that this squad has ever been. A big gun base with four frag cannons, three missile launchers, and another terminate with storm shield to soak up damage, one more marine, and a biker, that's a lot. That's a lot to be going into any Imperial army. But at this unit size, the size you want it, because at 165 points for just five veterans, 
you would just take the five man codex agents death watch kill team at 65 points cheaper. But the Proteus kill team at its biggest, it takes up 15 transport spaces. They don't fit in any transports, not even a Corvus Blackstar, which they fit in under the index rules. The only way to get around that would be to have more regular veterans and fewer terminators. And then we're losing one of our biggest advantages, the higher toughness. So you could just have them moving up the board, ponderously firing away. If you have a more combat version, then rapid tactical relocation in the Autozenus detachment is a good choice for them, or have them in reserves in the fleet detachment and have a rogue trader order them to walk onto the enemy deployment zone turn two with the Masters of the Void stratagem. That is a scary prospect for your opponent. The Fortis kill team was 115 points for five or 230 points for 10. They are now 100 points for five or 200 points for 10. Exactly the same as the Death Watch veterans. You can compare the weapon options of each one, but it seems to me that the Fortis kill team wasn't good before, but now that their points are better, we still have better options. The Fortis kill team is always going to be a shooting focus kill team, but a firstborn veteran kill team can take a greater variety of weapons and can have frag cannons and heavy bolters and shotguns and snipers to get that damage too, or they can go the more combat route with heavy thunder hammers and power weapons. Taking the Fortis kill team means you are relying on the plasma guns. You will have five rifles, four plasma incinerators and a bike for the extra wounds. If you took the unit before, be happy that they're now a bit cheaper. But I'm seeing this unit as another massively missed opportunity. We could have had Infernus Marines or Desolation Marines options. They could have been added in. But that may feel a bit too much like a Primaris tactical squad for some people's comfort. Little effort has been expended in sending this unit to Legends, and the error with their chainsaws, where they're worse than everyone else and hit on a 4+, that continues. This remains a badly written datasheet. You wouldn't ally these into a Space Marine army any more than you would before. A Plasma squad that's able to shoot on death, and an Intercessor squad with sticky objectives is a better choice and gives you better special rules. You would take this squad if you like the one story about how a Fortis kill team saved a watch captain's life and suddenly he had to respect Primaris and everyone loved the Primaris and there was much rejoicing. Not a lot of people like that story. As they have a lot of bullets, they like the special ammunition. The plasma weapons can now, once again, like the very, very start of the index, use special ammunition. So they can get even more armor penetration than before to potentially menace tanks with your AP minus four shots that wound tanks on a five plus. The unit doesn't have the Tacticus armor keyword, it doesn't need it, but just to make sure the Primaris continue to be excluded from the firstborn transports, they cannot get into a Rhino. It's the Corvus Blackstar or nothing for them. Unlike before, they can be joined by a Watchmaster so they have that going for them now, and you can get them into combat easier by sticking the Outrider up front. But this is not a unit you want to try and kit out for combat. Captain Artemis is a better choice because lethal hits on your guns that have better than normal armor penetration is a decent choice, but if you're putting Artemis in a unit, go bigger. Think of the Indomita kill team. They were 135 points, 5 or 270 points for 10. They're now 120 points for 5, or 240 for 10. They are the bigger brothers to the Fortis kill team. It is worth the 40 points to have better bolt rifles, melters instead of plasma, and the missiles of the aggressors. All of the models in this unit have three wounds and toughness. They are very tough. Always toughness six. Every model is toughness six. Even if you're down to one Indomitor model and a character, you still use the highest of the two toughness 6. As a solid brick, they are a very useful requisition unit for squishy armies like Battle Sisters or Imperial Guard, but Imperial Guard may choose to have a big tank instead. They like the special ammunition stratagems. They have a lot of shots and decent armor penetration. Two of them can have Fragstorm missiles and Boltstorm gauntlets. They can now benefit from the special ammunition on the missiles. So being able to wound on a 2 plus and go straight through the saves where their armor penetration comes in, that's very useful. Or think about having flamestorm gauntlets instead with anti-infantry 2 plus, anti-monster 5 plus, auto-hitting, and twin-linked. 
Okay, I thought about it, and it's okay because there is only two of them in the squad. But you can make them great at assassination as the Purgatus tactics was changed, maybe not deliberately, to happen on critical wounds, not critical hits. So the character killing mission tactics and hellfire rounds makes flamers amazing at murdering characters. Assuming this wasn't an error. We've seen a lot of them in the agent's codex. But this is another gun based kill team. The veteran kill team in the codex is better geared up for combat, so the special ammunition rarely gets used on them. Any stat changes for them? Why no. They still have the bad aggressor fists hitting on a 4+, while they hit on a 3 plus in the Space Marine Codex. The unit can still have one melter rifle and one multi-melter for some very limited anti-tank. And like the Proteus kill team, they can have the weird weapon thing where the heavy intercessors can have one heavy bolter per five models in the squad. So even though the box only comes with one heavy bolter and the rest of the squad might not be using heavy intercessor models, you can still have two heavy bolters on your five heavy intercessors. Because of their Primaris armor, they can't go in a Rhino, but 10 of them, including having two with jump packs, can fit in a Black Star as long as there are no characters attached to the unit. This follows the Kill Team rules, and the Corvus Black Star just wants 12 Death Watch models. Using Captain Artemis in the squad to give them constant lethal hits is valuable with the amount of shots they put out, more so than just relying on the once per game from the mission tactics. But if you go with a Watchmaster and add the Beacon Angelus, you can make up for the unit's slow speed with Deep Strike and Rapid Ingress. Or in the Imperialist Fleet, you don't need a character attached for clandestine operations to give them Infiltrate. The Fleet Detachment is good for them. You can get plus one to hit against an enemy unit without needing to lose any models. And if you can get onto an objective, you can instead have a 5 plus Invulnerable save and be Objective Control too. Or if you did add a character to the unit, you can keep using Displacer Field to make your high wounds and high toughness also get a 4 plus invulnerable save against shooting. They were good before and they remain a very interesting pick. The Spectrus Kill Team is a team that can't decide if it's an Incursor Team or an Infiltrator Team. It has both of their core abilities, Infiltrate and Scout. While the Teleportarium Stratagem for the Black Spear Task Force is gone but changed so it only affects one unit, this unit can independently disappear and reappear, so they are also like Space Marine Scouts. All the stealthy people in one. And with their lowered points, they could be considered better than the Marine units that they are made out of. This unit was 105 points for 5 or 210 points for 10, now they're 90 points for 5 or 180 points for 10. After your starting infiltrators, you also get to add two eliminators with last fusils for more high strength, high armor penetration, random damage, but that can have a go at being anti-tank. But we don't get the support that the Space Marine units give to their army, like pointing at a unit to give the rest of the army plus one to hit. We would need the fleet detachment to get something like that. You can have some characters join them, as with any other kill team, but with a character, they lose infiltrate and scout. As you may have guessed, no Rhino for them, but since they can infiltrate and scout, they pretty well serve by themselves in getting up the board. And the veteran bikers can get up the board themselves, they also can't go in a Rhino because unlike all the other bikes in this index, they are mounted. Their stats are the same as before, but their points are a bit different. They were 80 points for 3 or 160 points for 6, now they're reduced to 70 points for 3 or 140 points for 6. So that is 10 points cheaper than their stat equivalent Adeptus Astartes bike squad. And we still have all of the cool weapons. You still get a shield on the sergeant and you can have the rest of the squad with long vigil melee weapons. They're very useful for actions and getting to objectives quickly. They have no joinable characters. None because they don't have the kill team keyword, so any characters that can join kill teams can't join them. After seeing all these Death Watch units broken down by me and their uses explained, I just want to mention I have a Kofi. It's like Patreon where you can pay monthly, but if you liked, say, one particular video, it also takes one-off tip money. I can understand if you don't, it would mean supporting a Death Watch player, and Games Workshop doesn't seem to like the idea of Death Watch players getting much support. Now this Legends PDF document also has other Agents of the Imperium characters and units. The Damned Legionnaires are still around. And they've had a change so that they are now extra spooky. 
Their Force Battleshock test is at minus one leadership. Their Chainsword was previously unusual, like Kill Team Cassius, it was five attacks with the same profile as a power weapon. Now it is the profile you would expect from a Chainsword. At the same points before, and as their agents the Imperium, while they lack the Death Watch keyword, you could use them as a small Death Watch kill team if you had something unusual, like a squad that had Heavy Flamers or a Melter Gun, because you'd previously, in past editions, base them off a tactical squad. So they could be a useful stand-in. The agents, no wait, the, the inquisitorial acolyte, this squad, these people. They changed to just be those models in the box, so the previous metal demon host was moved here. It works weirdly alone. It can just go alone, but it has objective control zero, so it can't complete actions or hold objectives. If you have an inquisitorial agent, this squad unit, then the demon host doesn't take up a retinue slot when you're using them as allies. It's a convoluted way of being able to join the Inquisitorial Agents to give them a 5 plus invulnerable save. It's one Demon Host unit per Acolyte squad, but that Demon Host unit can be two models. Rather than being a 10 point upgrade, they are now a 40 point unit because they can go by themselves and get in the way. Eisenhorn makes your Demon Host attacks a little bit better. Compared to other Inquisitors, Eisenhorn is a little bit better at combat and shooting because his attacks have precision, but he has a worse special rule. It's the Gene Stealer Cult Magos special rule. He's the same as before, still 65 points, so he's 10 points more than a regular Inquisitor. You can just use Eisenhorn as a regular Inquisitor. And then to round out the Inquisitorial agents... Oh, hello, monkey! Well, this is awkward, because I didn't expect to see you here. He now costs 30 points instead of 10, much like the demon hosts, the Jakero can join an Inquisitorial Acolyte squad, and then he doesn't take up a character slot when you use assigned agents. Or you can have three monkeys running around firing lasers at the enemy and getting in the way by saying ook. Expressly, the Jakero cannot be the warlord as I know so many of you would have their Death Watch army led by an alien monkey. You think Games Workshop made a monkey out of this army? I'll show you how to make a monkey out of this army. So they're a little bit of fun if you want to include them. UR025, a definitely not ancient robot, is the same points as before, 55 points. They're viable for actions as they are a lone operative and they have OC of at least one. With Vindicares currently costing 150 points to ally into other armies, the same as a Lehman Ross Eradicator, he won't be worried by any anti loan operative shenanigans anytime soon. And a tank does precision better than a sniper. If you just blow up the whole unit and the character, it does the same job. And UR25 also has a reactive move to keep them safe. They're a decent loan operative. Janus Drake from the Blackstone Fortress game is here, and compared to before, his pistol has gained an extra damage. He is cheaper than the Rogue Trader Entourage and does the same thing. He's 40 points now, he was 55 points, and 40 points is cheaper than the 75 points of the Entourage, or the 105 points you would pay to have them as an ally. The keywords he has are great for the fleet detachment, and with his backroom deals, you are adding more infiltrate to a detachment that's already high on infiltrate. He is an epic hero, so he can't have any enhancements, but he has the same special rules. Being alone without the entourage, you're missing like the assassin and the medic, so he'll want a bodyguard of his own to stay alive. Nayem Shai Murad is the same as Janice Drake. They have gained an attack on their pathetic close combat weapon. This is a rogue trader that you would take if you have the peg leg model and you don't have Janice. Likewise, they are 40 points now and were 55 points. And there are two more Inquisitors that we can have. There is the Inquisitor in Terminator armor. They can't be transported in a Rhino, but this is where we get a rules clash. They can embark in any transport the bodyguard can embark in, but they also can't embark in Rhinos because of the Terminator armor. So I'm thinking that no, because the Terminator armor is what will win out. They have the same units they can attach to, just like a regular Inquisitor, and they're just 15 points more than a regular Inquisitor for an extra wound and a better save. The Inquisitor in Terminator armor has better shooting attacks than the regular Inquisitor, but because they're going from Toughness 3 with Terminator armor to Toughness 4, you don't want to have them in a Proteus kill team, because that's another Toughness 4 model, and you want a Toughness 5 or Toughness 3 model. 
Who doesn't love getting back the command point spent on special ammunition, if you roll a 3+, plus, but you'll do that with the regular Inquisitor for 55 points, not this one for 70 points. Aside from having the model and liking them, there's not a lot of reason to take them over a regular Inquisitor. Inquisitor Karamazov is sort of a viable alternative to any firstborn dreadnoughts you may have. We want more dreadnoughts leading armies. We can't just have the Space Wolves doing it. Karamazov is 140 points, while a dreadnought is 135 points. And he's got legs. He has gained three inches of movement and an extra wound. He no longer has the dread reputation rule to cause battle shock. He is an unsubtle crusader, and he hands out scout to three of your agents of the Imperium infantry units or one Imperium battle line unit. If your army wasn't infiltrating or deep striking in the fleet detachment, this gives your death watch some bonus speed to get up the board. He's 10 points more from his previous 130 points, but he's got benefits to make it worth it. So that's all of the units in the Imperium Agents Legends document. Now that we know all of the units that we can have in our Death Watch army, not just the ones limited to the Codex, let's have a look at some army lists. The first one's a bit more fun and a bit more on the casual side, which is really how Death Watch had been played for the entire edition. We weren't super popular at tournaments, we weren't winning lots of tournament games, so casual but fair and matched play are how a lot of people have just been playing Death Watch. There's no reason that can't continue. So we have the Ordo Xenos Alien Hunters Detachment. We have Kill Team Cassius. And we have an Indomita Kill Team with Artemis leading them so that they get lethal hits on all of their many shots. This unit is going in a Black Star. As long as only one of the Indomitas has a jump pack, including Artemis, it will fit in the Black Star. Having the Black Star counters their very slow movement. And the Black Star also adds some anti-tank as it's going to have a twin LAS cannon, two Stormstrike missiles, and the Auspex array to ignore cover. So there we have two big units of 11 models that can make use of special ammunition. Especially when the Purgatus tactics and Hellfire round can be used together to eliminate enemy characters. Unless that rule gets changed in an FAQ. With Deep Strike on Cassius and the Black Star to move around the Indomita kill team, they can get where they need to, and at a thousand points, there are fewer enemies on the board to screen out deep striking units. We also have the bonus pseudo deep strike redeploy with the rapid tactical relocation stratagem. So those two are our heavy hitters. Then we have two units of five Death Watch kill team, which are the veteran kill team from the Codex, and we have a unit of 10 Navy Breachers. The Navy Breachers and the veterans are objective control too, so they can hold objectives. It's entirely up to you which ones you want to have moving forward and which ones will be staying on the home objective. And this is a law accurate watch company. It has a captain, it has an optional librarian and chaplain, those are in the kill team Cassia squad, and it is four kill teams. It matches the law. And that's something we can be very proud of and have fun with in 40k. If you want to go a bit more competitive, and I say just a bit more competitive because we struggle with the same issues that the Sisters of Battle had at the start of the edition. Very little anti-tank. In fact, we have even less anti-tank firepower than the Battle Sisters did. But this is what we've got. Instead of trying to take out tanks, we'll just swamp them and endure against them with our invulnerable saves. This is all about starting far up the board and staying there. So we start with a 10-man Spectre's kill team. They can infiltrate all by themselves and then scout after that. We have an Indomita kill team, and they've got a Watchmaster with them, as not all of their weapons have assault, this will mean that they can move and advance and still be using their multi-melter. It gets around their slow speed. And having a character also means they can use the Displacer stratagem to get that invulnerable save. They like the fleet detachment because then there's the option to defend an objective, and then they get an invulnerable save and higher objective control. The Watchmaster has the Clandestine Operation Enhancement, which allows three units to infiltrate. This unit isn't going to infiltrate because the infiltrator rule is given at the start of step 5 before you add characters to a unit. We would have to make the character have infiltrate and the unit have infiltrate and then put them together. Instead, we can have three other kill teams infiltrate. So we have a 10 man Death Watch veteran squad. They are kitted out for combat because they're going to get close very quickly. They don't need a rhino for protection as they're infiltrating. Then we have a Proteus kill team. Toughness 5, it's a lot of tough bodies, it's infiltrating, and same for another Indomita kill team. They are infiltrating. We have Janus Drake, who's got 10 Navy Breachers with him. He can infiltrate. So there's another unit that's infiltrating. 
An alternative to having Janus is to use the Rogue Trader Entourage and for the points, six Voidsmen instead of the 10 Navy Breaches. That would be five points less. It depends on the models you own. The Rogue Trader Entourage and six Voidsmen came in kill team boxes. We have a second Proteus kill team in reserves. They are going to walk on from the side of the board or walk into the enemy deployment zone with the Masters of the Void stratagem. As long as the Rogue Trader is alive for at least the first and second turn, we can do that. There is a five-man veteran kill team which can hold the home objective. They can also be redeployed into reserve by the Rogue Trader or Janus because they are a battle line unit. And then we have an Armager Warglaive to give us some anti-tank. We're taking the same solution as the Battle Sisters did at the start of the edition. Use Armagers. They will also be deploying in reserve for safety. So we can start the game with the only unit in our deployment zone is the Indomita kill team with the Watchmaster. That's it. Everything else is infiltrating or can be in reserves. And with that army list, we can try and be a bit more competitive with our agents of the Imperium. That may be something to try at a tournament. Although the problem then is most tournaments, but not all tournaments, won't let you take Legends units. But with this army list, we can have a much better go at winning a standard match play game. You know, the 40k games you're always playing. But now that we've seen the Codex, now that we've seen the Legends documents, I do have thoughts. This Legends document is a very lazy copy and paste. I'm disappointed as we could have fixed some of the weapon issues in units like Kill Team Cassius, the Indomita Kill Team and the Fortis Kill Team. At least we got cheaper units and have our full Death Watch complement to make the Auto Zenith Detachment work better. It doesn't work so well in the Codex where you only have the Death Watch Veteran Kill Team. But we don't have the Space Marine tanks or the characters. They're no longer compatible. But not for the first time this edition, eh? Do you remember when character rules got changed when the Space Marine Codex came out and suddenly nothing could join our units? Ah, what are your thoughts? You've stuck around this long, so you may as well tell me. Right, just to make it easy so that you can use these units in your games with as little difficulty as possible, there are links in the description to the PDFs of all these units and another link to the points. And there are even more links while you're there. One is to Kofi, where you can send me tip money so that if I can't stay sane, I can at least stay fed. And there are also links to my affiliates, companies that sell Games Workshop models at a discount, like the new Imperial Agents Battle Force boxes, like the Primaris units that make up the kill teams I've shown off. And using these links helps my channel to make the videos you like. If you don't want to use the Legends rules for reasons, you may be able to split up your kill team squads back into space marine squads and field a space marine army in the Ironstorm or Gladius detachment with a little bit of Death Watch support using the assigned agents rules. That style of list was very common as a tournament Death Watch army anyway. So best of luck in your tournaments without these units if you are going to tournaments. Good of you to stay for the end if you're not planning on using these units and to everyone else who is, you'll want to take a closer look at our two best detachments. We have the models, we have the rules, we have a burning desire to purge the alien. They think they're in ascension. Let us prove them wrong and let's have a great day with Death Watch in 40k.